Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we are going to be playing Ultimate General Civil War, the sequel to the 2014, uh, I would call it a hit, Ultimate General Gettysburg. This is another video in a long series, we're now into part 9 I believe it is, of my Ultimate General Civil War series. This is actually taken from a live stream of a couple of weeks ago now, and we're going to continue through to the remainder of the campaign. Uh, we just recently fought the Battle of First Winchester, although we were defeated. Uh, in our last video we were actually reviewing the Civil War book uh, Defeating Lee, a history of the Second Corps of the Army of the Potomac. Now in that video I told you we were going to refight the Battle of First Winchester. I think it's the only battle that I actually refight during this entire series, uh, but it is one we're about to refight in this video. Uh, the point of this is really just to kind of get us back into the live stream where I talk a little bit more about the battle uh, and get us going. But what I will say is uh, from time to time I am going to do things like book reviews during this gameplay series. I also am thinking about discussing more history around the grand battles as they occur rather than relying on the live stream audio. You know, the initial couple of episodes in the series the idea was let's very much uh, adopt a here's how you play the game and let's talk about it so let's just use the audio I had for the live stream but now that we're nine or ten parts in the game's been out a couple of weeks the interest in the game itself uh, maybe not waning but certainly no longer increasing in order to keep the series interesting I'm thinking about maybe uh, just doing a sort of a the, the gameplay we'll use from the live stream but maybe we'll replace the audio interested to hear what you guys say I know a lot of you tend to kind of be split half of you prefer the the gameplay audio half of you prefer uh, historical discussion um, but anyway uh, with that being said we're gonna go ahead and refight the battle of first Winchester and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and jump back into the actual audio from the gameplay and uh, I hope you guys enjoy. Maybe we try and refight this battle with these forces. What do you guys think? Do you think we should organize it to try and put our artillery in a single division? That has some logic behind it. Maybe we put the cavalry and the artillery together. That way you kind of have the cavalry support if the enemy comes up. This will give us exactly 12 units as well, which is the max for this battle. So you've got the, what, 43 guns and 750 horse. They'll provide cover for the guns. And then we'll have the infantry kind of in their own wing. Let's see here. I'm wondering if it makes sense to have, like, rifles in one division. So let's see. Mississippi. Still. Okay. Wait, where did they go? Okay, the two Lorenz units are in one division. We'll put the... Mississippi's. Okay, so this is the rifle division. Two Lorenz rifled units, two Mississippi units. And then this unit is all Springfield. So the first division is our elite division, if you will. I think they're our most experienced, and they also are all longer-ranged weapons between the Lorenzes and the Mississippi. The second division is going to be more of our shock troops, where they've got the Springfields, which are really good in close range. And then we've got our artillery, which is a mixture of kind of short range stub nose guns and uh, our six pound lighter guns as well as some cavalry with it so this is kind of our setup here I don't know if it makes more sense to bring any of these units over instead I don't think so I think we just go with the first core let's see what you guys think yeah I can't give Cav its own division right now guys because I can only bring one core to the fight and I don't have a one you know I've got too many units to do Cav by itself so we'll do that. We're going to refight Winchester. Hopefully it goes better the second time around. Alright. So we've got 8 infantry. 16,000. So we've got 16,000 men. Oh, wow. 18,000 men. So our army is the 1st Division with these 4. 2nd Division. 3rd Division. And then it looks like we get... Turner Hill Garnett, which is like our commander, and then our supply wagon. All right. So we know this battle. We've already fought it. We've already lost it. I don't really feel like the enemy's outnumbered, right? I mean, does it really seem that way? Anyway. So, moral of the story is to get the artillery...
So the first division is all going to go here. The enemy is going to hit us with artillery, but we've got to at least clear this front. Maybe we use the cavalry to, to clear the, the farmhouse. I'm not going to charge them in against all the enemy troops, but I, I also do think we need to, at some point, clear, clear our front. I'm just kind of moving troops forward here. And I'll use the cavalry to just quickly overwhelm the skirmishers, if the infantry doesn't do it on their own. After that, I'll form these troops up and kind of take my time and form my troops up to smash the enemy in an organized manner. Um, we know they're really strong on the right, so I think we're going to try and overwhelm them on the left. Maybe we can swing wide and outflank them, come in behind these woods, kind of like we did last time, but without the assault on the, on the right woods. And then we can feed troops from our right over to our left if we need reserves. Meanwhile, I will bring the artillery up. I'm going to position them somewhere around here so they can pound the troops in these woods. But we've got to, again, we've got to clear the skirmishers to our front to do that. It's becoming abundantly clear that having a better reconnaissance trait for my commander would be useful. Okay. Bring our guns for it as well. Deploy the Orphan Brigade. What do they have? Mississippis. Hopefully one volley is all it requires. Oh, we captured him. Excellent. Alright. So the first division, remember, is our, our rifles. Oops. First division is going to deploy over here. Oh my god, I'm clicking the wrong button. So first division, deploy like this. Second division, deploy, oh my god. Second division, deploy here. Oh shit. Enemy skirmishers again in the open, catching us by surprise. Again, as long as these skirmishers are in the open, I'm gonna charge these fucks. That's something cavalry can be useful, is cleaning up the mess these skirmishers leave on the battlefield. Getting rid of these jerks. Finishing off these small little detachments that are more a nuisance than anything. Although we are taking some big hits from these artillery pieces. Alright, so we captured another enemy skirmisher unit. So we're going to pull these guys out. We'll withdraw them. Pull these guys out. Someone's shooting at somebody. Looks like there's horsemen over here. Okay. So we'll pull these guys out. Move our artillery over here. No, these guys pull out. Where's our wagon? Where's our supply wagon? Did we lose our supply wagon? Why am I not seeing it on here? Alright, finish these damn cav off. I sure hope you can do that. 
Does anybody see my wagons? They drove our horses back. Shit. Don't liberate them skirmishers. No, oh, don't. Why is Banks riding around my flank? Where are they going? My cannons take forever to go anywhere. This whole idea of moving my cannons, the battle's already half over. And they are not even getting into place. I'm going to have to move forward without them. And I don't know if my supplies got captured or if the enemy just... Or if they disappeared and there was some sort of bug. Alright. Anyway, we're moving forward into these woods. Looks like we're trading fire. There we go. Rod had surrendered. So, another enemy unit captured. Our horsemen are doing alright. Let's just make sure they're not trying to flank us over here. We don't have that much more time, though, to inflict casualties. And look, they... Their artillery has us flanked. I'm worried they've got infantry over here, but... God damn it, our guns are taking forever to set up. It'd be real nice if they didn't take this long to move. Okay. I'm guessing they've got infantry in these woods. The second we move our infantry forward, they're gonna start taking fire. That's a huge artillery battery, by the way. Why are these guys retreating? Well, they're not. They're acting strangely, though. I don't want to move. I know they're taking casualties, but I don't really want to move yet. It's a huge artillery battery again. Fifty men or five hundred men. It's twenty-five per gun, right? So that's over twenty artillery pieces. We're about to get hit by canister. heavy casualties here, but we're going to move into the woods here ever so slowly. Because my artillery's doing jack shit. We got Stonewall kind of in reserve here. Surprised we don't see any enemy here yet. You would think we would have spotted them if they're in these woods. Oh. Well, get into the woods then if they're going to pull back and give you the woods. Get some cover. Yep, there's the enemy infantry that we were expecting to see. Almost 3,000 men under columns there. Okay. 
get a volley into those guns before they pull back out. Eh, didn't do much. We've still taken over a quarter, over a fourth of, or fifth of the strength of the enemy artillery. Looks like we might still be out of range of their their infantry. No, definitely not. Oh boy. And keep an eye over there. Meanwhile, in the south, the battle's going okay. As last time. Don't charge. No! What are you guys doing? Numbered by a thousand men. Uh, this is going to be another defeat. Trying to get Barto over on the flank. I don't know if I have time. That's the problem. Actually, no. Don't use. Don't move there, Stonewall. Go over here. I mean, we're definitely losing more casualties than them. My artillery is completely ineffectual. Guys. So do we have to inflict... Tw 30% more casualties on them than we suffer? Or do we just have to inflict 30% casualties on their total force? Hopefully the Foreign Legion and the Irish Brigade can kind of hold their ground as these guys come forward. Because we are driving them back ever so slowly here. If we can get to the city and maybe take the objective. They are retreating through the... through the town. Now our left is being attacked though. Fortunately, now we've got a battery of guns here that might be able to do something about it. Maybe we'll use these other guns to try and stem the tide. As we make a move or a play for the city. We don't have a lot of time to drive back this brigade. And they've got cover behind the town, so... Drive him back. Out of the town. Let's go. There you go. Ugh.
Confederates secured Winchester. There you go. Now we gotta hold it. I don't know if that gives us at least a draw, I'm hoping. I don't know, I guess we'll see here. No time left, it says. Does, do we get the extra 26 minutes here? Victory! Yes! 16,000 Confederates versus 12,000 Union. We lost 2,000 men. The Union lost over 2,500. 16 guns to 2. 43 cav... 430... Uh, cav's about even, but they lost 300 plus missing. All right, guys. That was like a near-run thing. I don't really care about my units. Um, two lieutenant generals were wounded. <laughs> Wait, is this a bug? X, 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 wounded. X, 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 wounded. Okay. Innis Dole promoted. Several promotions. We lost. Thornton Broadhead was killed. Okay. And uh, Albert Lyle was killed. But a victory nonetheless. Uh, captured some 1855 Springfields. These are good guns. Not a lot of them, but they're good guns. Um, this is kind of the iconic Springfield rifle, I think. Uh, we captured six pound ward guns and some hunters were rescued and captured. Okay. Well, that's excellent, guys. Yes, it was rough, but hey, it was, it was worth it, right? So let's see if we can replace our losses. Well, this guy only lost one unit, so, or one, one guy. There's no impact with going with a single rookie, so we'll do that to save money. I think if we do that... Yeah, that's not really worth it either for this unit. Honestly, I think we just go with the rookie replacements, because if you look here, they lose so little experience when the unit is still very strong. It's a little bit more when, when it's a small, a larger unit, so maybe for this guy, we'll, uh, we'll keep the veterans. The Iron Brigade, I think we'll go with the Rookies. Uh, we'll go with the Veterans yeah. here. Veterans here. Sir, yes, sir. And again, Veterans here, because again, there's a lot more yeah. guys. We've, when we've got a larger unit we've got to replace casualties for, that's when I kind of go yes, with the sir. Veterans. I think for the Cav, we're going to have to go with Rookies. And then... Two artillery pieces. So we expanded the size of our guns a little bit. Replaced our casualties. Tiny little bit of money left over. First division is okay. Second division is nearly non-existent. We will not be ready for uh, Gaines Mill at this rate. But hey, we won a battle. We got a little bit of reputation back. So we're up to 15 reputation. That means the morale penalty drops a little bit. Um, we have no reputation to spend. If we go to the armory or barracks, Jackson's still wounded. We could dismiss him, but why would we do that? It's Stonewall Jackson, right? We got additional career points for some additional money. Um, plus 5% gold. Seems to be we need more money than anything, right? Um, I would like more reconnaissance. I would like bigger divisions and stuff. But, um, honestly, I think we really need the politics. We need that money so we can continue replacing our losses with the way things are going. And we can build up a second core. Yes, sir. So we'll do that. It won't take effect till the next battle. And uh, I think the next fight, let's see here. The next one is either Cross Keys or Port Republic. Union keeps sending more troops to deal with our moves through the Shenandoah Valley. Our signal station on uh, Massanutness Mountains. The Union Progress reported two Union columns converging on your position under the command of General Fremont. The army of General Fremont is marching on the Valley Pike. Advance your force at Cross Keys and stop him. Okay, so we can try and go for another victory here. To, uh, again, boost our prestige a bit. At the end of the day, we'll still lose if we lose Gaines Mill. But it's another opportunity for a, um, a battle, I guess, is the best way to put it. So uh, we'll fight that here in a second. I'm going to just check in with the chat, see how you guys are doing. All right, folks, and that's going to do it for this live stream. We refought the battle of First Winchester, and we won a rather significant victory against the Union forces there uh, in this uh 
effort, we were successful. And uh, I'm going to just go ahead and I know it's just a little bit shy of the 30 minutes we usually play for. But I'm going to go ahead and cut the stream off here. And in the next stream, we will uh, return to the Valley campaign. And hopefully we will continue to see more success as a uh, even better and more efficient General Jackson. Uh, anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed the stream, uh, and with that being said, uh, my name is The Historical Gamer, and until next time, I'm out.